Welcome to Around the Dog World. It may not be a new year, but it is the start of the new show season. We're here at Stafford Agricultural Showground for a UK toy dog. In Staffordshire this weekend, we see the country's best toy dogs going into Best in Show and Best Puppy under Val Boar, with the hope they go home with the biggest prize for little dogs. But before we turn our attention to the toys here this weekend, we want to pay tribute to two terriers who've grabbed the headlines over the past 12 months, winning the biggest prizes in our sport. Best in Show is the Wahoo Fox Terrier. Congratulations. Well, now it's time we look ahead to the rest of 2015 and the start of the show season here at UK Toy Dog. But before the tiny dogs here take too much of our attention, we want to take a closer look at a few breeds outside the toy group. The first of which is another terrier to have topped crafts. We went to Cerdan to talk to John Averis about the Welsh Terrier. Thank you, John, for, for letting us come and meet you and, you and some Welshies. But here at Saradon, Welshies are not the not the only thing boarding, are they? No, we uh, we we have five different breeds here, all out of the terrier group. Uh, we're terrier fanatics. On a terrier day at any championship show, you can be seen with four breeds. Yeah, we've won four CCs, four best of breeds at one show. <laughs> that's a, that's a great day. I wasn't very popular. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing coming here to Saradon is the heritage of the place. Success goes back generations, doesn't it? Yeah, my mum started the affix early in the 80s, said, and uh, before that uh, it was my grandfather, Les Atkinson. Uh, he was under the name of Belden, so third generation now, and hopefully my daughters are showing any interest, so Super. maybe even further. Fantastic, and something that we often see you with is uh, a dog that's bred overseas. You seem to work very closely with breeders, not just in the UK, but around the world. Yeah, I think it's a case of having to. Uh, like a lot of the uh, terrier breeds, they're quite thin on the ground. We don't have big numbers. So we try to encourage and bring in new blood whenever we can. Or going back to old lines that have been out of the country for some time. And we are obviously here to talk about the Welsh Terrier. Um, so tell us a bit about the history. How did the, the breed develop? It is obviously a, a Welsh native breed. Yep. Early 1800s it right. was developed. And they say it goes back to the Black and Tan Terrier. Wow. which is as early as the 13th century. Most terriers are strong-willed, hardy breeds, but tell us a bit more about the temperament of a, of a Welsh. A, a Welsh is very happy and carefree. Seldom you see a Welsh with his tail down. They're a very confident, strong breed, one of the strongest breeds I know. They love people, they love children, they love other dogs. And when I arrived this morning, they're, they're very happy to come and see people. They're not shy, are they? No, they're not a one person's dog. Uh, they're not the most loyal of dogs. They will go with anyone with a treat or someone new, they will go to them. Being a friendly breed, you would assume they, they make super pets? Yeah, wonderful. Uh, I have two in my house uh, that uh, I love to death and that they make the ideal pet. They haven't got a bad bone in them. A lot of the terriers look quite similar, but yeah. takes across the appearance of a Welsh terrier. It's a long legged terrier. Uh, Shape-wise, similar to a wire fox terrier, mm -hmm. uh, you want a square dog, but a lot heavier set, a lot more rib, more bone. You're looking for a brick-shaped head, yeah. so you're looking for a strong rectangular-shaped head, plenty of power in the muzzle, and some length to them. You're looking for a keen expression. That's the most important thing with, uh, I think, every terrier, you want a keen expression. Um, what was it that they were bred to do in, in the first place? General vermin, foxes, badgers, uh, they've worked all sorts of quarry. And they're on the vulnerable list. Yeah. Are people working to, to increase numbers or are we working to, to keep that stable? We'd like to get them off the vulnerable list, obviously. Uh, we've got a stay above 300, I think it's for five years. Right. Uh, we're struggling to do that at the moment. 
you get a lot of people who've had Welsh before right. and they always have Welsh again. <laughs> Once you've had one, they are very addictive. <laughs> If anyone's buying a puppy, I always recommend they take it to the groom as, as early as possible. Yep. Uh, earlier they, one's having a good talk there, earlier they get the relationship with their groomer, the better. Keep a whilst tidy, four or five times a year grooming. On the flip side to that, they don't molt. What's the sort of requirement with regard to exercise? A, a Welsh will keep themselves occupied quite well in an enclosed garden. Mm -hmm. You do have to make sure you, you have no holes in your <laughs> fence because a Welsh will find it. Yeah. Uh, if you go out with them with, say, a ball or a raggy toy, they will play with you all day long. They absolutely love that. Uh, a regular walk twice, three times a day. But Welshies do love to sleep yeah. and they love to eat. They've got a real big appetite, so you do have to monitor the weight. Um, well, thank you very much for letting us drop in. Yeah, um, no problem. And meet you in the world. Thank you. Well, we started with a terrier from the Principality. It's only fair we have a look at an English native too. The one we've chosen is also one to have stood atop the podium at Crafts in 64, 77 and 88. We went to the kennel responsible for the win in 1977, Bornhouse, to talk about the English setup. Uh, thank you, Penny and Gordon, for, for letting us drop in. Talk us through some of the some of the achievements you've had over the years. Well, Gordon should start because he already won Supreme Champion at Crufts wow. before I met him. Born a Hatch Dancing Master. Yes, that was his yeah. first CC. Wow. And that was under Catherine Sutton. That's quite an incredible win as well. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. But of course, nerve wracking to go out and collect the other two CCs, you know. He, yeah. Once he got his title, Gordon retired him and he was just kept at home. Um, so that's that's quite incredible stuff f from from way back then. We'll we'll go back even further though. Yeah. Um, they are a, obviously a British native yeah. breed. What was the English setter bred for? It was mainly a dual purpose dog. Right. Um, in fact, it is generally recognised that um, Laverick was the founder of the English setter, and obviously at that time it was purely for work. You know, strictly for birds, not yeah. not for no, rabbits not or any other yeah. game, not retrieving. You know, if you have a puppy, they've often got some working instincts still. You right. know, you'll see them pointing at birds and <laughs> setting at chickens, mind do. But, you know, people find it difficult to bring out that trait, if they wish to even, because, you know, they're how not... many people have got access to the moors? So they, they have to be uh, intelligent breeds, level-headed, athletic? Yeah. Yes. All things that are vital to working and both showing as well. Yes, we yeah. have, you know, that they have kept the English setter, you know, to be a very active sporting dog, very capable of doing a, a day's galloping and, you know, going over harsh terrain. They're, they're very active dogs. Hmm. But over the years, one could say the show setter now hmm. is entirely different to the working setter. Right. You get very, very sh few show setters that could do. Work. Yeah, they're not as fast as the working, and you know, they're, they're slower. slower. We have two people in the breed that um, keep show setters hmm. and also have their working setters. Right, OK. Oh. Ah. And they go for two months, three months to Scotland every year <laughs> with a team. Right, wow. So the, the origins of the breed can be traced back several centuries, yes. but how was the breed developed? To be honest with you, there are various suggestions, but I don't think anyone has categorically said it is a mating of this and this. I don't, I've never read that at all. Well, even when um, Laverick, who was born in 1800, um, there were setters of a kind before that, mm. in fact, from the 13th century. Right, well, and all the setters each have a beautiful coat, lovely colour. Well, the, the English setter is basically a white background with what they call Belton. Right. There is the blue Belton and tan, which people call the tricolour. Yep. There's the orange Belton. There was a lemon Belton years right. ago when wow. I was showing. Yeah. And then there's the blue Belton, which is like the just white with silver, white with some black. In more recent years, the popularity of the breed has, has somewhat dwindled. Yeah, yeah. They dropped onto the vulnerable list. Yes, they did. Yeah. Why do you think that was? 
Well, people's lifestyles have changed. They want a smaller dog. People haven't got the gardens they had, mm. perhaps. Do you think they should be more popular? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah I think they should. Oh, I, don't, I don't understand why they're not, because they have the most wonderful temperaments. Um, you know, they are just wonderful dogs. They're so loyal. They're amiable. They like people. They like other animals. And with such a gentle nature, you would expect to be perfect for children and families. They are. Oh, They're lovely yes, with children. Yeah. They are beautiful with children. So what do you expect to see in an English setter's appearance? Elegance. Yeah. A lovely head and expression. It's a must. They should be an honest dog, but they've got to have some glamour. So we, we've we've gone through the whole breed. Uh, it's past. What do you see in the future? Well, we don't have any new people starting up as breeders. You know, as we were when we started, we used to go and ask people, and you know, the doyens of the breed, um, and they were kind. They always had time to stand and talk. Good morning everybody. Now when they're made reasonably well and trained physically like you would a gymnast which is really all that dressage is, you end up with something that stays sound for a very great deal longer. What a fabulous walk. Welcome to Around the Dog World. We're here in Stafford for UK Toy, and in a few minutes, we'll watch Val Bloor judge all of the best of breeds and pick her best in show winner. But first, I'd like to welcome someone we don't often see at this time in the programme, Mike Gasby. Very nice to see you, Mike. Nice to see you. Um, toys are not the group we usually associate you with. No, no, but I've always loved the toy group, and I love judging the toys. Um, I've been, we have bred one or two toy breeds, um, we've bred a champion Papillon that's been shown today, she's got the reserve bitch sticking today, and I've had champion Pugs, so I have, although it's not my main focus really is poodles these days, we, you know, we've had a lot of involvement in the toy breeds, and I love them, absolutely love them. And give us an overview, an insight into the toy group as a whole, what, 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 what do they encapsulate? Well, you know, uh, the thing with the toys is that uh, what's exciting is that any country in the whole world you go to, you can see fantastic toys. And, you know, when you consider that people have bred these little dogs that are sound, they've got fantastic temperaments, they're really healthy, they're, you know, I think it's a great credit to dog breeders, not just in this country, but literally all over the world, that these toy breeds are in such good shape. And what was their purpose? What were they bred for originally? Well, they've always been companion dogs, really. Right. Um, one or two, like English toy terriers, would still have an, you know, there'd be an aspect of them that wanted to kill a rat or a <laughs> rodent. But, you know, basically they're companion dogs. There's been criticism over the past few months, but when you come to a show like UK Toy and any of the group shows, there is such positivity in there, isn't there? There is complete positive attitude when you come to these group shows. Everybody has a great time. You know, this business about this rivalry and that's, you know, that just generally doesn't happen. People come and they want to win and they want to make sure that their dogs are in great condition and beautifully put down. And for that reason alone, they try to win. But the reality is that there's so many great positives. People come, as you can see, there's still a lot of people. It's towards the end of the show. There'll be a, a good group round the uh, best of show ring later. A lot of people stay to support their friends. There's a great atmosphere, and we have to provide a united front for pedigree dogs. And this is all about the positives that exist within the show. And this is typical of the group shows. Well, thank you very much, Mike. Pleasure. Okay. We'll head to the main ring now for Val Bloor's best in show judging. Commentary is from Liz Stannard. Right, the first dog in the ring now will be the Affen Pincher followed by the Australian Silky Terrier, the Bichon Frise, the Bolognese, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the Long Coat Chihuahua, the Smooth Coat Chihuahua, the Chinese Crested, the Coton de Tulia, 
the English Toy Terrier, the Griffon Bruxello, the Havanese, the Italian Greyhound, the Japanese Chin, the King Charles Spaniel, the Laotian, the Maltese, the Miniature Pincher, the Papillon, the Pekingese, the Pomeranian, the Pug, and last but not least, the Yorkshire Terrier. First of our best of breeds today is the Athen Pincher. They were judged by Terry Burgess. He had 46 dogs making 48 entries and his best of breed was number 22, the Bitch. Now on the table, we have the Australian Silky Terrier. This breed was judged by Caroline Rowe, who had eight dogs making eight entries, and her best of breed was number 55, the dog. You can applaud your own favorites, you know. We don't charge you any more for making a noise. On the table now is the Bichon Frise. They were judged by breed specialist Anne Worth, who had 70 dogs, making 73 entries. And here you have the best of breed, Bichon Frise, number 118. On the table now, we have the best of breed, Bolognese, judged today by Anne Horan, who had 28 dogs, making 31 entries. This is the best of breed, Bolognese, number 139. Now on the table we have the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Best of Breed. This breed had two judges and Best of Breed was the dog number 221. That was our Best of Breed Cavalier King Charles Spaniel number 221. On the table now we have the Best of Breed Long Coat Chihuahua. This breed was judged by Sandra Stanko. The best of breed long coat chihuahua number 358. And now on the table we have their smooth coat cousin, judged today by breed expert Amy Davis, who had an entry of 145. On the table now we have the Chinese crusted powder puff. No, I meant the Chinese crusted dog, which is a powder puff, sorry. And now on the table we have another of our non-CC breeds, the Coton de Tullier. And that was our best of breed, Coton de Tullier, number 853. Now on the table we have the English Toy Terrier best of breed, judged today by Richard Haynes. That was our English Toy Terrier Best of Breed, number 870. On the table now, we have the Griffon Best of Breed. These were judged by Ian Miller. That's right, that's right. please do give them some applause. They worked very hard to get through tremendous entries in some cases. And to win Best of Breed at our own show deserves a lot of recognition. On the table now, we have the best of breed Havanese. Quite right, do give them lots of applause. This is a very emotional day for them today. The second set of tickets in a breed that's worked really hard over the years to get themselves established. On the table now, we have the Italian Greyhound best of breed, judged by Miss J. Doherty. and her best breed was the male, 1083. On the table now, we have the best breed in Japanese chins. The breed was judged by Jane Thomas. That was best breed Japanese chin, 
number 1121. On the table now is the best of breeding King Charles Spaniels, judged today by breed expert Mrs. Pauline Sidgwick. That's right, applause for our best of breed King Charles Spaniel, number 1304. On the table now we have the Lauschen, another breed judged by Anne Horan, who had 29 dogs, making 30 entries. That was our best of breed Lauschen, number 1305. On the table now is the best of breed Maltese, judged again by another breed expert, Mrs. Sharon Johnson-Love. This is our best of breed Maltese, number 1364. On the table now, we have the best of breed Miniature Pincher, judged today by Irene McManus, who had an entry of 71, and her best of breed was a bitch, number 1392. Now on the table, we have the best of breed Papillon, judged today by a doyen of the breed, Mrs. Pat Munn. That's it, a bit more applause. I thought you were all going to sleep out there. This is our best of breed Papillon, number 1582. Well, we made you wait a while, but the first of the toys we want to take a closer look at is the Peak. We sat down with some of the breed's most successful breeders earlier today, Bert Easton and Philip Martin of Yaki Pekinese. Well, thank you, Bert and Philip, for joining us. Um, on the last Around the Dog World, we watched you in the best of show ring at Crafts, or the group ring at Crafts, taking Eric to Group 4 after winning Best of Breed. What's it like not having the breed CC record holder to show anymore? I think it's good, it takes any pressure off you, like today I've only brought two puppies. But it must be nice having the Breed CC record holder at home. It's fantastic to have the Breed CC record holder, because not as only is he beautiful to look at, he has got the most beautiful nature. Let's go back to the very start. Talk us through the, the origins of the Pekingese. Pekingese originated in China, and they were only allowed to be owned by the royalty, the emperors and the empresses. They were looked after by the eunuchs and they took great pride in these Pekingese, the eunuchs, because they had special competitions for them for the smallest, the nicest coloured and all different things. And there's been lots of poetry written about the Pekingese, that why, why they've got short legs, is so that they can't go very far from the <laughs> palace. Why they've got tufts of hair in their feet, so they don't make a lot of noise. Why in the breed standard it says small five times, because they had to go out, a lot of them were kept inside here in the, to keep, in the sleeves to keep them warm and they were to look like lions so they have to have a bigger mane and all the rest. Um, and they are, a, they are an ancient breed? A very ancient breed. If they were only allowed to be owned by the Imperial Palace in China, um, how, how do we see them today? We see them today because the British soldiers looted the palace uh, from the Dowager Empress and took some back to um, Britain. Wow in Queen Victoria's time and they gave her one of these Pekingese that came from the Royal Palace and it was called Lutie. And since those very early ancient days of, of the Pekingese, the breed has obviously changed quite a lot, um, particularly with regard to the head and the coat. Yeah. Um, how would you best describe the appearance of the breed today? Well, I think they look better today than they did then, but they were still beautiful. Well, they, they have changed because we're bred them with, with shorter noses, but They've come to the point we don't want them too short the nose so that it can breathe better yep. and we want big open nostrils so they can breathe as well. We have bred for coat and I think maybe to excess for a time but now we're breeding for less coat and we want it all in the mane and in fringes we don't want lots of body coat and that's the way they were when they came over from China. 
and movement in the breed is quite unique. Why exactly is that and what is it a judge is looking for? The movement in the, the peak is, well, it's not unique, it's not the only breed, but there's a few breeds for this. It is very wide at the front yeah. and much narrower at the back, so they do it move in a different way. Yeah. And they've got such short legs, they can only take small steps. And the breed standard was changed in 2008, um, and of course, they were added to the high profile list in, list in 2012. Um, in fact, Bert, you were the judge at Crafts when, unfortunately, that, that first dog was disqualified from taking its place in, in the group ring. How has the breed reacted to that? I think initially we were very disappointed that this dog failed the health test because I judged it and I would have said it is a perfectly healthy dog. But it was that the criticism of the way the vet checks were carried out. Why was that? Initially, there was criticism but latterly, all the vets have been undergoing the specific training by the Kennel Club to look for specific things in the breed. For instance, Pekingese, they'll be looking at the hind movement to make sure they're well muscled. They'll be looking at the eyes, that they're not large and just too large. The overnose wrinkle and also the nostrils, make sure they're not pinched. There should be a random check rather than the best of breed. It specifically doesn't answer the question of whether a breed is healthy. Especially when you have a dog like Eric winning so prolifically. That's right. And what about looking at the breed in the future? How do you see the peak in 10 years' time? Well, I think the breed's going from strength to strength. We have went down in numbers, but I think the quality is getting better all the time. Fantastic. And you spoke about Eric's good nature and the nature of the peak. Tell us more about the temperament. Pekingese have got most fantastic temperaments. They're not fighters, they're easy to live with, and they're very loving. And I've spoken to you in the past, and, and you always talk about the dogs roaming the garden yeah. and running around chasing rabbits. This is true. I'm saying every day we're forever taking bushes out of the coats. <laughs> That's what I spend my life doing. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very thank much. You. On the table now is the best of breed Pekingese, judged by Martin Debenham. The entry today was 52 dogs, making 54 entries. And on the table now we have the best of breed Pomeranian. There was an entry of 131 today for Judge Mrs. Jane Bailey. That's our best breed Pomeranian, number 1736. Cubs today had the biggest entry of the show but had two judges. That was best of breed Pug, number 1895. Now Val is going over the last of the show's best of breed winners, we need to stop again to investigate this breed a little further. Earlier today, we spoke to the best of breed winner all the way from Spain, Sergio Amen, but first, Richard Haynes, judge today of Yorkshire Terriers. Richard, thank you very much for joining us. You, you were judging in this ring earlier. How yeah. did you find the Yorkshires today? A good selection, uh, quite a few different types. Um, Teeth were good today, but movement was a little bit uh, dicey on one or two. And th this was your winner? This is my best of breed winner, yes. So tell us what gorgeous. you thought. Well, he was outstanding for fit for function. He, he, he moved, he showed his personality, his, his bomb-proof temperament, a real terrier. UK toy has treated you well over the years, hasn't it? Well, actually, it's one of my favorite shows in England over, over several years already. Understandable, <laughs> a couple of best in show wins. Now, living in Spain, it's quite a long way to travel, and it seems a little strange that you, you've fallen in love with a breed from the north of England. How did you get involved? Well, that was some years ago. <laughs> I have been breeding and showing Yorkies for all 30 years this year. And I got involved with Yorkies because one of my friends in Costa Rica, I'm originally from Costa Rica, uh, so she had an accident and she asked me, please, can you help me? with the care of the dogs and showing the dogs and reading everything. So I say, oh, of course, yes. So that's why I got involved with the Yorkies. But right. before, I was breeding Schnauzer, miniature Schnauzers mm -hmm. and American Cocker Spaniels. OK. Now, take us to the origins of the breed. Well, they had a dual origin because they were companion dogs 
little tiny ladies pets but there were also ratters and mousers right. so you get bigger and smaller in the same litter right the yorkshire men and women did not write down what they did right. they, they kept their secrets to themselves <laughs> but we guess that maltese and black and tan toy terriers and sky terriers were all used in the mix and the the first thing that strikes you about a yorkshire terrier is this coat yes Tell us about the coat and the preparation and everything that goes into making Mike look as good as he does. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, coat is in the breed is the, is the prime importance. It's a lot of work, but it's something that we do with, with love, you know, keeping it in, in good moisturizing condition. What we do is we use the papers or the plastics to, to wrap the coat. They break some coat, yes, but they also need that. I mean, they need yeah. to play, they need to be dogs before being a show dog. That red box, where, where's that originated from? That's from before the Kennel Club. Right. The breeders had their travelling boxes and they would throw a piece of red silk or red velvet over the box. And if you put these dogs onto red, it enhances the colour, it makes them come alive. And when they're kept as a pet, for instance, this isn't the coat you'd usually keep them no, in. No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, we're praying for the dogs to finish so we can clip them down. <laughs> and whenever we see you, in Britain with a Yorkie, personality seems to be a major, major point. They, they all love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the breed has to be like this. They're toy terriers, but they're still terriers. And they are also companions. So they have to like people, they have to, to, to be friendly. They cannot be aggressive in any way, but not timid neither. You know, it's important for the breed to have a good character, to have a good mind. One thing that people generally assume a small breed is perfect for is families with children. Yes, I mean, the dog is perfectly normal to be with kids around, uh, but the problem is not the dog, the problem is mostly the kids. Because, of course, especially when they, when they are puppies, because the kids, especially the small kids, they want to take the puppy up, you know. And this high for a small Yorkie puppy is too high. The good thing about the breed is that they love exercise, you know, but they love to be with, with the owner. So if you go out, they will go out with you. If you are in the toilet, they want to be in the toilet <laughs> with you. If you are sitting watching TV, they want to be like this, watching TV as well. Yeah. You know, they want to be with you all the time. It's a big companion, especially for people that they live alone. I think it's perfect for them. What about health considerations? Are there any concerns that breeders have specific to the breed? Yeah, well, as you have to be careful with the patellas. I'm very particular about the muscle and the head because short muscles with not much bones. It means not enough bones for the teeth to get the roots on it. Right. So they still missing teeth when they are two and a half, three years old. And it's not healthy for the dog because they are dogs that live very long. This is a lovely breed. I mean, it's very lovely companion. They are quite healthy, actually. I think they do wonderful pets. And, and also, I, the people who is interested to show them, I know it looks difficult at the beginning, but we were all beginners, beginners. sometimes. It takes some while, a little while to get used to it, but I think it's, it's a lovely breed to show, and as we need new people always coming to the breed. And now we come to the final best of breed in this very strong group, the Yorkshire Terrier. And this is our Yorkshire Terrier best of breed, number 2074. First in the short list is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the Long Coat Chihuahua, the Cotton de Tullier, the Laotian, the Papillon, the Pomeranian, and the Pekingese. Uh, the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight. Yes. What would you ask him? To care. I see myself as the judge that was banned.
Congratulations to the rest for coming so far, doing so well in your breed. We now have a short list of eight. So do please support your own best of breed. They've done marvellously to get this far and they're great exponents of the breed. Well, without any further ado, Mrs. Brewer has called for the boards. So very, very shortly, we shall know who is best in show at the UK Toy Dog 2015. And it is the Long Coat Chihuahua. Followed into second place by the Papillon. Third, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And fourth, the Cockland de Tourette. Congratulations to the remaining four. Thank you very much as they leave the ring. The Long Coat Chihuahua, best in show at the UK Toy Dog. Followed by the Papillon, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, and the Cockland de Tourette. Well, Leslie and Jeffrey, it's becoming a bit of a habit seeing you on around the dog world. It is, isn't it? <laughs> How many CCs, best of breeds, has, has he racked up now? Oh God, I think that was his 26 today. He's a uh, general championship best in show winner and now winner at the the UK's top toy show. Oh, yeah, unbelievable win. Um, fabulous. It's a special show for me. I love this show um, because obviously it's all the toy breeds. So yeah. to win it is just, oh, it's remarkable. And a, a huge entry as well. Yeah, it was a massive entry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jeffrey is still very young. We spoke to you at the end of last year. What are you looking ahead to this year? Um, I think we're going to carry on this year, as I said last year, because he's so young and he so enjoys showing. Um, and to pull him now, he'd, he'd, well, he'd hate it being left at home. <laughs> and I couldn't leave him at home. Definitely not. Tell us what he's like to show. Oh, he's just a dream. He never, ever lets me down. He's just constantly um, performing. He, he is a little performer and he just loves it. He really does. He, he looks like he comes alive with applause as well. Oh, he does. I think he knows. Yes, I've won. <laughs> Again. Um, the spotlight makes things a little bit of a, a different yeah, he, atmosphere. He did, today, he didn't, um, he didn't like the spotlight when it first came on. I think he was OK once it was there, but yeah, yeah. initially he was a little bit, you know, what's that? Because you don't get that at a lot of shows, so it's quite know. unusual. But, um, it adds a bit of glitz. Yeah, it does. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, a massive congratulations, and no doubt we'll see a lot more of you and Jeffrey in 2015. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> First in the short list is the Athen Pincher. The English Joy Terrier. The Havanese. The Italian Greyhound. The Mosha. The Pomeranian, the Papio, and the Japanese chip. I think we're finished with the rest. Thank you very much indeed. Congratulations to all of you for doing so well in your puppies. Again, we have the short list of eight. And then we have to go around the ring again. Have a final assessment of movement, presentation. It's been a long day for some of these puppies who went in the ring at 9 o'clock this morning, so I think they're all doing extremely well. Right, the 
Congratulations, Don. You, you. you and Mr. Darcy have had a good day. We've had an excellent day, unbelievable day. And tell us a little bit about Mr. Darcy. He's a puppy I bought him from um, Ken and Richard Go uh, Morgan Stanley's. Uh, they were good enough to let me have him when I saw him as a little puppy, yeah. and he's done me excellent. <laughs> I mean, it's not stopped winning for me. It's not the breed we uh, tend to associate you with. No, no, no. I've had them as long as the crested, but. Um, I normally just have one around me at a yeah. time and I just fell in love with him as a puppy and that they were kind enough to let me have him. And a superb start to a career. An excellent start to his career. <laughs> I can't believe... I mean, his first show, um, club show, he went out, best puppy in show and reserve ticket. You know, at six months old, yeah. what more can you ask for of a puppy? So well adjusted. I put that down to, you know, the people that reared him. Well, Val, how, how did you enjoy your best in show and best puppies? It was most enjoyable and an honour to do them. Uh, tell us about that long coat chihuahua. It was quite stunning. Yeah. I've never seen it before, but it really showed and showed, and it was a very good breed type. And what about the papillon insect? Papillon was the complete size that I like in a papillon. Very sound mover. The cavalier was very nice. I think he was a little frightened by the light to start with, mm. but when he settled down, he moved very soundly. And the, the cotton, we don't often see them in placings, but... The cotton I've judged on before um, as a puppy and as an adult, and he really is what a most wonderful front for the breed. And best in show in general, it's a toy specialty show, so you get the specialists sending them through. Yeah, what do you think yeah. of the overall quality? I thought it was quite high today, and a lot of breeds it was very high. One or two were a bit disappointing. And what about the best puppy, the Lauchen? The Lauchen is quite stunning, actually belongs to a friend of mine and I thought shouldn't really put a friend up but it was the best dog in there so I put it up <laughs> and what about the puppies in general they, they... the puppies I actually thought were very promising maybe more promising than some of the adults well thank you very much and congratulations you're most welcome thank, thank you, you. <laughs> as I said before Caroline has three children and they are Sophie Jones and Toy Terrier, the Italian Greyhound, the Miniature Pincher, and the Yorkshire Terrier. I think we finished with the rest, but congratulations, they all do your credit. Remember, these are veterans, seven years and over, all looking very fit and well. Again, okay, they're all going to give you one more lap of the ring. A short list of six. Yes, it looks as though we're ready for the board, so I'll be come again. And any minute now we will know who is the best veteran at UK Toy Dog 2015. Very popular with the puppy the smooth coat chihuahua. Oh. <laughs> and a very exciting third handler, easy feed. And in fourth place, the Australian Silky Terrier. The mini pin, followed by the smooth coat chihuahua, the English toy terrier, and the Australian Silky Terrier. Ria and Dylan, you look rather emotional and quite excited. Yes, I am. Yeah, it's been it's been one long day, but one very happy day. Um, Dylan is already a champion, but that was a very long time ago. It was, yeah, back in 2010. I made him up at our club champ show. Yeah. And this is his first time out for a while? Yes, he hasn't been shown for four years, so this is his first champ show in four years. 
And it looks like he, he's a natural. He absolutely loves it. He's, he's my heart dog and has done me absolutely proud. <laughs> um, lots going on in our house. Um, I've got a five-week-old baby at home, so right. to be able to have come today has been a massive thing for me. Um, and, and, and enjoy, enjoy our veteran career together. I, I know a little something about, about young babies, so I hope you get a, a rested night's sleep yes. and open something fizzy tonight. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. I've had one already. Um. <laughs> Best in show at UK Toy 2015 was Geoffrey the long coat chihuahua, champion Holly L. Topaz Chancer. And sitting ringside tonight, as always, was Di Johnson. Very nice to see you, Di. Hello, Simon. We've seen Geoffrey winning a lot. Best in show at South Wales last year. He's a cracker. Yeah, we've admired him, haven't we? We've loved him. Finished last year third or fourth top dog. Yeah. Um, a fantastic start to a career. He's only two. Yeah, I know. Never lets her down. Loves it. He loves the show ring. But he's chihuahua. Um, and second place was a papillon. A lovely papillon and beautifully handled, beautifully presented. A good dog, a lot of winning under his belt. And third was the cavalier. Held its outline, moved well. Um, I sat with Lee Cox who was saying he put it up somewhere and I can quite see it was a very nice cavalier. And uh, one very unusual place very, in Cotton. Very. I don't know too much about Cotton. I don't think we had them in my day. <laughs> but I happened to sit near people that were experts on the breed and they said it was just right. So who are we to argue? <laughs> Um, and best puppy in show, a Lauchen. Ah, now I can really tell you something about this. I watched a club show a couple of weeks ago and that puppy went best puppy and then best in show, quite rightly. I thought it was outstanding. But at the other end of the spectrum, best veteran went to a minpin. Yes, and didn't look super. But we expect toys as veterans to be good, don't we? They've hardly had a taxing life. <laughs> they've, they've laid and been stroked and made a fuss of. No, it was a, a lovely lineup, and I thought that minpin was exceptional. We always enjoy coming to these group shows, and, and today is no different. I, I thought it was a smashing show. I saw lots of dogs that we'll, we shall see a lot more of during the year. Well, thank you very much, Di. We'll see you again here at Birmingham National. Look forward to it. Our congratulations to Geoffrey. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you at Birmingham National.